watercolors. Uh, my name's Jess. I use she, her pronouns, and this is Monica. I'm Monica, um, and I use they um, and she pronouns. And we are all so excited again that you're here. I wanted to go over just a few things. Um, this is a recorded space, so um, if you, for whatever reason, are uncomfortable with that, please feel free to turn off your camera. Um, we're totally fine with that. Also, take breaks. Um, you can come and go as you please. This, uh, as this is a recorded space, we will have the recording available if you ever feel like you want to revisit anything that Monica goes over to Monica goes over in this lesson <laughs> today. Um, and we're so excited to begin this um, watercolor lesson. I will be running the chat, so if you have any questions or um, comments or anything that you want addressed, please feel to message me, and um, I will leave it to Monica uh, to begin our art party. Welcome, everyone. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just really excited to share this workshop because um, it really took me only about 118 years to figure out this combination and about 300 brushes. Um, to narrow it down to two. So this is why I'm excited. Um, so I'm gonna open up um, and share the artist that I'm gonna talk about because I think the way that uh, she approaches art um, is something that has inspired me over the years. Um, I'm gonna introduce Bernice Bing. Bernice is a Chinese American um, artist um, in the 60s when um, in the San Francisco Bay Area when Bohemian art and the beat um, movement in poetry was popular. So the beat movement was all about um, just speaking against capitalism, speaking against materialism, um, and that art scene had evolved from them. I'm going to read a quote, and hopefully that becomes somewhat the theme of how we approach watercolors today. Um, and so this is after studies of being able to work with Zen masters, going to China, um, uh, and, and learning different calligraphy and Zen painting. Um, and I really do like the idea um, of this as an Asian American. Um, so I'm going to read this quote. I wanted to concentrate not so much on images that would appear as landscapes but rather to capture its ongoing changing dynamics of light. So we're gonna be talking about that. And, and also light in ways of spaces. So in calligraphy, um, the idea of calligraphy, which is a, um, a, a Chinese or an Asian uh, way of painting, and it's a, a script of characters, but it's how you paint those scripts and the spaces in between um, that becomes its form. And so I would like to think about spaces uh, in that way too. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually, just because I want to go through all of the techniques, um, we're going to open up. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention about um, being and why she's become one of my heroes. Um, so as a woman of color, um, a lesbian, and also going through different uh, foster homes. Um, she was really popular during that time in the 60s as a gestural painter. Um, but because of her wanting to live her life unapologetically, became forgotten and overshadowed by names like Jackson Pollock, as, as you would like Jackson Pollock and, and those action painters. Um, so I'm celebrating her today. Um, and we're going to go into our first technique, but what I want to share with you is a Japanese term that was borrowed from like a Chinese um, Zen philosophy also is um, Yohako Nobi. So if uh, John, you can switch it to the, the first, um, actually go right there. Um, we're we're going to start our um, workshop here. And Yohako Nobi is the beauty in empty spaces. And I'm going to um, talk about masking fluid. And the, the purpose of masking fluid is to save your details, which is really important when you do um, lots of watercolors. And the thing about watercolor, too, is um, sometimes we have a tendency to want to like overwork paint. Um, so working on a canvas panel, 
what we have here on our, our workstation is um, a canvas panel where you have a treescape mast, and then we have a practice sheet of watercolor paper. And what I like about the canvas panel is that it allows you to see how your water and your paint interact. Um, and then you get a feel for how these techniques that we're gonna be going through um, actually work. Um, so today, we're gonna be looking at three different techniques, one called wet on wet, um, flooding, lifting. Um, flooding is basically flooding um, a space or an area with water, and then you're gonna flood it with paint. Lifting is lifting the paint off, so that's a, it's considered a subtractive um, process. Um, terminology that you will hear me say is background, middle ground, which is your horizon line, and foreground. Why this is important in painting is because of how our compositions are layered. If, when starting a paint, a, a paint composition, if you can determine how these things are layered, background being first, you'll see it number one, um, then you have your middle ground. This middle line here is your horizon line. Um, I don't know, do you see me like, on, on my workstation I'm pointing out these different surfaces. If, yeah, there we go. So your horizon line is here. Your horizon line is where your sky and your land meet. So that middle part is called the horizon line. And then the middle ground to the foreground. So you'll hear me from time to time um, say these terminologies for us to be able to go and do these techniques. Um, important thing about painting too is determining where your light source is. So this is how we get the light in our painting. So if my light is coming from this area, then the parts closest to that light will be lighter. And then the parts in the middle will become like medium and then the ones underneath further away from the um, sun will be darker. And I will be able to show you more of that in detail as we go with the techniques. Um, but in this study, and I'm calling it study because with our panel, you can work this panel over and over and over until you find that effect that you like. And that would be before you go onto the paper. The paper doesn't, you, you can only wet that paper surface so much. But if, you're, if you wanna take these techniques and move it to paper, you will have like a better idea once you worked the panels. Um, I love panels for studying. Um, also another objective to this is not feeling that you have to arrive to the end, but to really enjoy the process along the way. There's gonna be so many things that we're gonna be doing working wet on wet. Um, the first thing is, in your kit, oh, did everyone have a chance to get um, two containers of water? And like, so go ahead and take a minute to go and do that and get like a stack of paper towels. The two containers of water is um, gonna be important for the different techniques that we do. So as we're doing that, for those who, um, are back. Um, there's two different kinds of masking fluid. There's one um, for acrylic paint and one for watercolors. I find that the one, like if you go to like, let's say Michael's or um, like anywhere and, and it says masking fluid, you'll see acrylic and you'll also see um, one for watercolor. Watercolor, the, uh, they'll work on both, but what happens if you, keep it too long on the paper, um, it'll rip the paper. And that's why I like using masking fluid on the canvases because you can work and practice these techniques over and over and over. So, again, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the wet on wet technique. What I like about the wet on wet technique is that it helps us loosen up. Um, right now this is, so determine which one is going to be 
stage your clean water. You really want to stay, have that cleaned as much as possible. And then the one container for where you have to clean your brushes. We're going to go ahead and take the wash brush, which is a flat brush. And we're going to go, we're going to work directly on our panel and we're going to start at the top and you're just going to wet your surface and go back and forth. And while you're doing, doing this, I just want you to really enjoy what this feels like going across your surface with the water, wetting the panel. For the wet on wet technique, you want it damp um, and wet enough so that your technique um, can get to the bottom of your canvas. And also with this, this gets used to this motion here of going back and forth. Wet on wet also is a nice way to just sort of understand our breathing. Just want you to relax, loosen up. Again, this is more about just having fun with all these techniques that we're gonna to get through. So looking at it, you should see like this glistening. And if you see puddles of water, you know, you can smoothen it out, go in, you know, both directions. So I'm gonna use blue for my wash color. And so again, we're gonna just get our flat brush wet enough and in your paint palette you've got these three different um, dividers. I use purples and blues a lot so I'm going to go ahead and use that in the middle and then I use the green and yellows in this and then like reds and oranges um, and, and colors that I don't use a lot in this left area. So I'm going to go ahead and what's called priming whatever blues and I'm gonna say choose your sky color and in this whole idea that um, we're looking more about what this landscape looks like you don't have to have a blue sky you can choose whatever color for this wash um, but I'm gonna use blue and maybe use a couple of different blues well that looks pretty I like that and maybe this blue. You'll see me dipping that in. And again, always remember which one that you're using for your clean brush. And you want to load your bristles enough that your paint is in the bristles. And then you're going to go ahead. I'm going to stand up. I like to stand up because it makes me really get into this. And I'm just going to go across. And we're going to keep doing that. And the thing about this wet on wet is filling your bristles enough with the paint and the wet aspects to get down to the bottom of your canvas. Might have to go over it a couple of times. Just go all the way down. And the masking fluid is a great way to think of it like tape without having to tape it's a barrier for paint. So your paint is not going to go through um, where the masking fluid is. Oops, I accidentally dipped it in my clean water, but that's okay. We're just going to keep going and just come all the way down. And it's okay that it goes really wet. That's what's really nice about this technique is we're just working a really wet painting. And the thing about it being this wet on wet is the softness that you get. And I'm just going to keep going over it until, and, and this, is the, this is the thing about paint and water. And doing it on a panel is that you get to understand how wet you want your surfaces. And to really get into that, go ahead and pick it up. Rotate it. Just let it just go wherever it wants to. Don't try and control. Once you like how that effect is, then you just lay it back down again.
but just really get into it. Just really connect. It's this is really just this collaboration between you and um, the surface. I have a question. Yes. So is it's not actually laying flat. It's like really like breaking up. The paint? Yeah, like on the since it's not directly on the canvas. Oh, it's not dark on the canvas? It's not directly on the canvas, it's on like the the plastic that comes on oh, it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead and remove the wax paper. That was oh, just to protect okay. the um oh yeah. For everyone, the wax paper is to protect the uh, mask. And then you want to be very careful um, to gently remove that wax paper. That protects the masking fluid. OK. I was confused on how yours was so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, this one here? OK, great. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Okay. So this is pretty wet, and that's okay. And it's okay to go through the trees because that's just, like, you know, when you see sky color going through the trees. Okay. So while that surface sits there, for the next technique, um, we are going to um, do what's called the first, um, the, the next uh, technique, which is called lifting, flooding and lifting, but this one is going to be the lifting technique. And you could do the lifting technique with both, um, with either the brush or paper towels. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take, let's say two paper towels together, just like this, I'm just putting these together. And I'm going to go into my clean water and I'm going to get this wet, but you don't want it drippy, you just want it damp, just like this. Just squeeze it out. Enjoy what that feels like in your hands, part of just this interaction part with all the tools that you're gonna be using for paint paintbrushes, now this becomes our tool. And what's fun is this is always a great way to also not get so um, bogged down into the details. We're going to turn our canvas upside down, just like that. And then we're going to re-wet this surface from the horizon line, which is this area here to the bottom now of this canvas. So go ahead, we're just gonna re-wet this again with your brush. And again, if you find that too wet, you have your paper towels to just sort of blot anytime you feel that your water is too drippy. And you're gonna go all the way to the bottom and re-wet the surface. And we're getting this prepared, we're getting this uh, area prepared or this sky area prepared for the lifting. Lifting technique is great for texture, clouds, or anything that you might think of wanting to use it, even in your trees if, if you'd like. So then I'm going to wet my flat brush again and I'm gonna dip it into my blues one more time Oh, maybe even some purples. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, sure. I'm going to scoot this up. Can you guys see that now? Okay. So I'm just mixing dark colors, and yeah. I'm really going to load my brush. And right about here, if anyone can see me, see my finger, I'm going to go ahead and lay that color down and just let it get wet. And I want this have to be, to purple. pardon me. Sorry, do we have to use purple? No, you don't. You can okay. actually use any color for this. All right. And, and then 
Um, for the masking, what does that do? Because I'm an artist and I'm looking to like explain my techniques and I, when I do start like my own watercolor paintings, if I do use the masking, like what is it essentially? So masking for? is is like a rubber. Um, it, it tries to be like a rubbery, sticky um, substance that you paint on just like a regular brush or with a regular brush and let me just go through this technique and then I'll talk about that as we do this technique. Um, okay. I'll come right back to that. You want, so the reason why is because you want your surfaces to still be wet for this technique. Um, you're gonna roll your paper, towel, paper towels loose and damp in your hands just like this and you're going to apply it directly onto the surface and lift up the paint while rotating your wrist just like this. And this is gonna create some nice textures that could, could eventually become clouds. So I'm just gonna, and then, so while we're doing that, what masking fluid is, is that it becomes, so like instead of using tape um, where you don't want your paint to go, masking fluid is a best um, thing for that because you can get really, really um, fine details um, and then towards the end when we re actually remove it after all of these techniques you'll see how it saves the white spaces. Great thing about um, this wet on wet technique panels again is that you can rework the surface as many times as you want until you get the effect that you want with your techniques. My paint's just coming off when I dab it. It's not making a texture, it's just coming off. Um, so what you might want to do is dab it or blot it on your paper towel and then just come, up, like come across the surface like this and then re and see if that works with your paper towels. Okay, thank you. Of course, just like that. And again, with any of these techniques, before removing the masking, you can keep going over and over until you like what you have. Okay, so that was lifting with paper towels. And we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna do it with a brush later on. But I wanted to show you that technique. And then we're gonna talk about, the next thing we're gonna talk about is, let's see, our second wash. And what we're gonna do with, oops, sorry. Okay. Now let's turn your canvas back to where the tree is upright again. And we're gonna work on the, sky again um, with the yellow wash all the way down and your horizon line. So clean off the brush with water, dab it or blot it. And I'm gonna use this clean water so that I'm gonna, because I'm gonna be using these couple of different types of yellows for this next technique. Do we have a yellow wash on there? Like a slide just to show that. So. Maybe, okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, so from that top part, after you get the yellow or the sky area that you like, the sky color. We're just gonna go across the surface and all the way down. And I started right underneath and we're just gonna go down.
I'm just going to go over it again until I get the yellow that I like in this area. You see me blotting off. Sometimes the brush gets too wet. There we go. I'm going to take it all the way down. And if you feel like your surface is wet from all the washing, again, blotting it and removing it using this you can do that with the brush, and it just takes it off. Okay. Yeah, kind of like that. And we're going to be adding detail as we go along. Are we ready to go on to the next? How is everyone feeling about that? We're just going to be working the details here in the sky and from the middle ground down into the foreground. Just like that. And that was the wash brush. And now we're going to switch brushes and get used to using what's called the saber brush. And what's nice about the saber brush is that on the widest end, it's also like a wash brush, but then on the tip, you can get finer details. So we're going to go ahead and wet that, and I, we're going to move into the slide, and we're going to talk about the horizon line, just to get this detail. Again, picking up the canvas, I've seen also that my texture, I'll go right back into it. And then at later times too, we can use these, the wet paper towel to pick up more water, just like that. I'm gonna wet my saber brush and I'm gonna use this palette where I have the yellow. Oh, I'm sorry, actually, I'm gonna go on this other side because I'm gonna add the green to that later on. I'm going to go on this side, right, to this part here, and then introduce colors from my horizon line. And we're going to keep going into that until it blends into the sky area. So. The space right above this line here, it's going to block it from going down further, this masking fluid. I'm just going to do, I'm going to get a little bit more in there, just like that. And then I'm just going to paint that detail using the tip up like this across and again don't worry about going into the tree just get that color in there just like that and that's my horizon line and you're gonna see me cleaning off my brush blotting it, because then I'm going to now start adding more yellow to blend in my horizon line into the sky, just like this. Oops, very drippy, it's okay. And again, I am working really wet because I want all of these colors to blend. Just rotate, let it do its thing, just like this. I like kind of that vertical movement that blends those two colors together. It's a good time to just let that go. And again, once I like where it's 
When it's done, I'm going to set it down and let it rest a little and let it dry. And we're still doing washes before we get into the other details of what this, this wonderful saver brush. Again, I had like 800 brushes and having it come down to two is really satisfying. So I'm going to be dipping my saber brush again into the yellow and I'm just going to use a spot over here. And I'm going to work this yellow color from this line right underneath the horizon line all the way down. Am I doing it correctly? I Yes, I think that looks lovely. I really love that a lot. I love how your color is mixed. I was doing a uh, sunset with like the green grass. And that's what's nice about the blue, using a blue wash, is that it already sets, sets you up for the, the land area. So in this, we're going to start doing the detail aspect and I'm going to come back and talk about light and dark. Um, and at the light medium dark is what I call it. And so the area in this middle ground, basically the, the top of the sky, this work could be kind of different is dark and it gradually becomes lighter in the middle part of the sky and it becomes darker from the horizon line. So there is your dark already. So where it's dark, I want to stay light and then gradually go dark as it comes to the bottom. So in order to do that, I'm going to just add dark details to the bottom of these hills. And um, as our canvas is layered, I'm talking about this area number two. Um, right in here, I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to wet and, and sometimes like you don't really want, at this point with the details, you want your water to be more damp than wet. And I'm just gonna wet this area right in here. And I'm using the tip of my saber brush as a detail. And then I'm going to dip it again and create a green that I like. And I will show you how light, medium, dark works in this area. So this is, I'm going to consider this my medium color. And I'm just going to paint this detail just like this. I want that area up here to stay light. And I'm going to just add this medium color until it shows up just like this. And then now I'm going to mix it with this green right next to it. And it's okay to mix these colors. And then just this tip is going to be my dark area, just right here. And it's okay for that, again, to just mix together, just let it do its thing. thing about gesture painting or gestural paint is that it's like little contact with your surface and just allowing this whole interaction between your body and the brush just like that I love rotating I love to just see what it wants to do it's doing its own thing I don't really have to paint that just allowing and that what's great about this lifting with your brush, like you did with the paper towels, is that if colors get in there, you can just, with a dry brush, clean water, lift up some of this paint that gets in there, and then push it back in there, just like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wet 
lightly dampen these areas and work my light to dark all the way to this bottom here. Keeping that part light, I'm going to go in just a little bit more yellow, letting it come across again. I like when all of my water and paint just mix together in this sort of soft movement. There's my light up here. I'm going to add dark and medium. And I'm using the tip of my saber brush to just brush it in, just lightly brush it in all the way to the bottom like that. Oops, I think, I don't know what color I just dipped that into, but that's okay. It's all right, we like that. Hmm? Scooched up right there, okay. And I like, because we're getting closer to the foreground, I'm gonna be really daring. I like purples as my dark, so I'm going to add purple to the bottom here. Ooh, what's gonna happen? Ooh, that's risky, but I like it. And see how that goes? And just maybe detail here, let it do its thing. Again, maybe that's gonna, you know, ooh. I don't know, are you getting these fun effects, guys? Like, this is like looking really delicious. Really satisfying, right? Just uh, let that canvas just do its thing. Look, look at that. Get some really fun darks in there. And we're just going to work it all the way down again. You know, I'm feeling like... What I did for... I did it where I added some yellow to the grass, because that's a reflection oh, from the oh my goodness. sunrise, and then it fades to, like, the dark blue oh. grass where it's getting nighttime in the background. I really love the effects that you have on that. That looks great. Do you mind if I borrow that idea for here? Can I just take that blue idea that you have and add that too? Thank really you. Like I've looks. practiced with digital art. That's why I know how to mix colors now. Yeah, it came out really nice on your canvas. I'll be right back to go grab some more wax paper underneath this so it doesn't get to the table. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Just let paint and water do its thing. Get some darts at that bottom. Again, I kind of want that vertical movement in my canvas. So as that sits and rests, we're going to talk about flooding. And if you feel more comfortable flooding on your practice sheet of watercolor paper before you um, do it on your canvas, it's always nice to be able to do that. So I'm cleaning off my brush, and then I'm going to use clean water. And if you wanted to look at my work surface and how I do this, I'm just going to make, an, like, how I see landscapes, honestly, when I see them is, it's just like this mosaic of beautiful colors coming together as shapes. Um, and that's how I like to see anything that I do, because then it becomes more about interaction of color rather than I need to really draw that maple leaf as perfectly as possible, um, which that's never really happened in my artwork. So that's why I really like the idea of mosaics and shapes. So on my practice sheet of paper, I'm going to take my saber brush and I'm going to make my favorite shape, which I call a clump. So you're going to hear me say clumps and shapes. You can borrow that term. It's, it's very technical. Um, and again, we're going to wet the shape. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to take some color 
And in this case, it's probably gonna be like purple and blue. And you're gonna let it just drop to this bottom here. This is gonna be the shapes that we're gonna be using for the mosaic things that are gonna happen in our trees. Clean off the brush, dip it in clean water, and you can literally push this color to the edge like I'm doing before you add another color. And what's great with this flooding technique is if you ever get into painting flowers or flower petals, this is a really lovely technique to use for that. Mm. Oh, don't make that mistake like I just about to, with the clean water. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so we're gonna take this yellow and watch what happens. Uh, isn't that satisfying? And I'm gonna keep that light because like if you move it around, let the water and the paint create that light so you've got like, again, the, you can control how that dark area and where you have it wet, especially on paper, not so much on the panel, but the panels for studies. When you actually go and, and want to experiment with water and watercolor paper, it absorbs it more so than it does the panel. But you can control those edges and where it stays dry, your water will, it will leave it, but like doing what I'm doing, it kind of keeps it to those edges. And then where I'm, when I'm liking how that looks, I'm gonna just set it down and let it rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna start doing these clump shapes. And again, thinking about the empty spaces between your shapes. That's the Yakuhunobi. Those spaces are just as beautiful in your composition. Cleaning off my brush. And I'm gonna start with my clumps at the bottom of um, this numbered, let's just say five, because I, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> yeah, so layer number five, because the way that the trees are is that this is on the bottom, this is next, and then this is on top. So I'm gonna start with this. And closest to this edge, because I wanna keep those light, medium, dark areas, Again, there is no right or wrong in how you create these shapes and how they remain on your tree. And I'm going to use my dark colors. Fill, just let it dab in to that shape, just like that. Do we do the whole tree or just a little part of it? We're just going to do that little part first. Okay. Um, I'm gonna want like, I don't know, I'm thinking, I'm feeling, and here's Sorry, where I Sorry, I never meet. asked your name. What is your name? My name is Monica. Hi. I was gonna ask, do you like colorful or more realistic? I'm sorry? On your free time. Do you do art when like on your free time when you're doing classes? I do do a lot of art on my free time. I. I love to do all kinds of art. I love this type of watercolor and I do it in like big, like where they're on the floor. And I do what's called watercolor pouring, where I literally paint, I pour the paint of colors right onto the canvas as they're on the floors. That's cool. It's a lot of fun. And then taking the tip of your brush, just like that, just sort of move around that paint. And because the rest of your canvas is really quite wet, you just kind of want to move it around, let it come to the edges. And then I'm just going to keep doing these clumps right next to it. And again, like leaving some spaces, because see how like now, like I like that. I like when the paint from this guy, it's like, hey, I want to come visit you over there, and it really just did. So we're going to go with that because that's just what it is to, like, allow yourself to just interact with paint. 
kind of like the way that looks. And I'm just going to keep going. Just going to create another. Keeping again this part of my tree, I want that to stay light. Doing, working this light, medium, dark throughout my composition. And the light, medium, dark combination in your painting is what gives your um, composition shape and volume, makes things pop out. Just gonna add all these different colors into my clump right here. I think maybe some greens in there. And so while we're doing this, and you'll see how it's pretty wet, this is the lifting method when you're doing the flood technique. So cleaning off my brush, and then I want to make sure that my brush is actually clean, blotting it. Try this in one of your spots. And I'm literally just going to lift the paint up, and this is where you get those light spaces again, pushing it all down. But you're doing this with an almost dry brush, but it's clean, like with clean water. Just like that. And then you can just keep adding, taking it up. I'm just gonna add a little bit of things in here, just like this. And add more yellow. Okay. I'm going to keep doing this as I fill in these light dark areas and I'm going to move into the second part of this um, tree with the same technique and basically everywhere else. Um, once we kind of got that finished, we might jump over to the last technique, which is called wet on dry. Um, just get all of our techniques in, um, and then just with the rest of the time, just sort of work our painting. Just gonna add a couple more shapes here, just like this. Again, the masking fluid is going to keep it from going into your other areas. Filling it in, and just keep going. As I was talking about the lifting, we're gonna do a combination of lifting, um, what I call wet and dry. And I'm gonna move away from the trees for now to show you the wet and dry technique, just so that we have um, all of the techniques. And again, because this is a panel, you can just continue to work it um, on until it's done. But let me show you the wet on dry. So the wet on dry is your paper is dry and your brush is wet, either with water or with the paint color, just like this. I'm gonna go into some paint, and on dry, I'm just gonna make marks, just like that. And you're gonna get some dry brush strokes. Here's a, a good way to see what this brush can do. So if you start off at the point, the tip, come down at an angle, apply some pressure, twist as you lift up, just like this, you get a nice little petal. And you can flood and lift paint off of that too. This is great for leaves. And I'm gonna show you how this lifting with clean water first works with picking up details in our land area and also want to talk to you about um, elements of design as details. And 
What elements of design and details is anything that you're going to use for detailing. And I'm decided, I'm going to um, use what's called um, the Babayan script, which is a script that we use in pre-colonial times in the Philippines. So this would be my calligraphy. And I'm going to use those instead of, let's say, like what one could use elements of design to do grass. I want to play around with um, a lot of these markings. Um, what's fun about this is that you can actually use these things and embed certain kind of messages. And I'll show you how to do that. Cursive, like just loose cursive is a good way to do it. But in showing that, it's like this. Like if you were you to use a mark with this brush, you would just go right into your dry area of the canvas. What color is that? Again, I'm probably gonna use purple for this. I, I really like purple for my dark detailing. And in these areas, I'm just gonna play around with just different elements of design, just like that. Just kind of go around, come across, and just whatever, whatever markings you feel, even if it's just like, you know, grass. But I, I actually like to use this Babayan script. I've been having a lot of fun in my own personal art practice. I do a lot with it. Just different colors, different markings. And then here's how you get more whites with the lifting method and the brush. With the clean brush again, blotting and working it in here, I'm just kind of coming in, lifting, lifting up the paint. It's called subtractive. You can actually get whites again and then just keep adding details. But use all of these methods, especially the flooding and the detailing, to get to finish this up. What's nice about this is that you can work on it and continue to work on it until it's dry, like your trunk. And I'm going to show you this next part. Once you get all the detailing done in your uh, painting, I'm going to show you what a finished part might look like. And so, again, using the Babayan script, embedded in my details is a word called, or a word that we say in Tagalog, magsaya, which means enjoy, um, which I've had this time that I've enjoyed so much with you, showing you the method of what I use for watercolor. And now, for the last part of this, um, this is very wet. Your canvas is really wet. So you want it to dry completely before you do this next step. Um, at least 24 hours, uh, you really need to have that canvas dry. Canvas, uh, canvas panels take a little bit time to dry. And when it's completely dry, where you saw your blue, you're just going to take your finger and rub off the masking fluid and see how it protected the surface, just like that. This is the, when you've gotten all the details, um, don't feel rushed in getting it all finished. Really, you know, take the time and um, finish, finish this panel. Once you also, um, can't you like, the nice thing about watercolors, like come back to it like days later because like it's based off of wetness. Yes, most definitely, especially when you're using a panel. If you're using masking on watercolor paper, you can't keep it on for very long. Um, but yes, that's what's nice about watercolors is that you can, you can come back to it. You can re-wet your surfaces. And I am now removing to reveal my white spaces, just like that. Just take it and just lightly rub it. This is why you really want this to be dry 
before you do this. And so the finished part, once you're all done and you remove the, the blue masking that you see, should reveal all these white spaces. And just quickly, the you know what, I'm gonna just show you this because there's so many things that you can do with masking and different layers. Like if you paint like one layer and let it dry, you can mask let that masking dry, paint it over again. There's so many different layers that you can put on top of the, the paint once it's dry. And, and this is what it actually looks like, multiple layers and multiple colors when you use masking. But thank you for letting me show you that and, and the wonders of masking. I use masking all the time um, just for these details. and. Um, but please continue to work on your watercolor until you get it all done. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Monica, for that amazing art party um, and watercolor. It is always a joy to watch you paint. And thank you all for joining us. Thank you all so much for coming to our art party this evening and for all your creative energy that you brought. Um, this is our last scheduled art party, so keep an eye out for your, uh, on your inboxes and make sure that you're signed up for Snow City Arts News just to keep in, in communication with us uh, for our other programming. We do have two open studios um, scheduled throughout the end of the year, and open studios are kind of like our party. Um, they are just for Snow City Arts students and alumni, so if you are an art, Snow City Arts artist, uh, student, and alumni, and are interested, make sure you email programs at snowspeedyards.org to learn more about that. Our next one's upcoming in November. Um, we also would love to see all of your beautiful creations yes, that please. you made tonight. Um, in the chat in just a moment, there, there it is right now, there is a link where you can share your artwork with us and we would love to see what you created. So you can just snap a picture um, and send it to us. There's a few different ways that you can do that through texting us. Oh my gosh, and I see some <gasps> people holding wow. up right now. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Yay! So I always love seeing what you Yay. create. It's amazing. Um, and so as you continue to work, if you want to share, you can text us, email us, or um, through a Google form, upload your photos. So thank you again. I it was do lovely to see have you all. a question. Oh, yes? Um, so you guys said that there's, like, you guys can, like, teach me, because you called, like, my mom or whatever, and, like, there's, like, a class for this? Yeah, yeah, so there's, there's, um, we have another open studio program, and also we can do some, um, we can connect and, and help teach in other ways, and so we can email Yeah, because my mom them. said that there is a version on one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah, we can set that up too if that's something you're interested in. So we can email and learn okay. about what time's best, and we'd love to love to help uh, help work and, and work together. Okay, real Thank quick before I go, um, I will work on it. I need to figure out how to do the brown and then fade into like because I'm trying to do wow. options. Oh, yay! Yeah. Thank you for I really Thank love you these. Us. Anyone else want to share where they're at right now? If not, that's okay too. Oh, wow. The purple as well. Love the purples. And I think I, oh. Wow. 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 That is so pretty. And I think I saw a question maybe. Nice. Is there a question too? Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. So many things. All right. These awesome. look great. Thank you again, everyone, so much. It was so good to see you. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining. Bye.